Chapter fourteen, text number five. And <laughs> Yavadartam upasino Gege cha pandita Gege cha pandita Vikrato rakvabhattatra To Raktavatatra Miloke Naratam Yasa Miloke Naratam Yaset Yadvadartam Pachino Deve Japandita Vikrato Rakatatra Viloke Nata Upasina Earning Day in the body. In the family matters. Sa also. Panditaha. One who is learned. Vitaha. Not all attached. Maktavat. As if very much attached. Petra. In this. Relocate human society. Naratam, human form of life. Just said, once you depict translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada. While working to earn his livelihood, as much as necessary to maintain body and soul together, one is actually learned to live in human society unattached to family affairs, although externally appearing very much attached. Please repeat, by working to earn his livelihood, as much as necessary to maintain body and soul together. One is actually learned to live in human society unattached to family affairs, although externally appearing very much attached. Purport. The sound, you don't hear the echo. No sound, you can't fix it. This is the purport. This is the picture of ideal family life. When Sri and Shaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Ramananda Roy about the goal of life, Ramananda Roy described it in, in, a different, in different ways. 
according to the recommendation of the real scriptures. Finally, Ramananda Roy explained that one may stay in his own position, whether as a Brahmana, a Sudra, a Sannyasi, or whatever, but one must try to inquire about life's goal, Atato Brahmajignasa. This is the proper utilization of the human form of life. When one misuses the gift of the human form by unnecessarily indulging in the animal propensities, eating, sleeping, mating, defending, and does not try to get out of the clutches of Maya, which subjects one to repeated birth, death, old age, and disease, one is again punished by being forced to descend to lower species and undergo evolution according to the laws of nature. Prakriti kriyamane ani guna karmi nisarasaha. Being completely under the grip of material nature, living entity must evolve again from lower species to higher species until he at last returns to human life and gets the chance to be free from material clutches. A wise man, however, learning from the sha- learns from the Shastra and Guru that we living entities are eternal but are put into troublesome conditions because of associating with different modes under the laws of material nature. He therefore concludes that in the human form of life, he should not endeavor for unnecessary necessities, but should live a very simple life, just maintaining body and soul together. Certainly one requires some means of livelihood According to one's varna and ashram, this means of livelihood is described in the Shastra. Question to be satisfied with this. Therefore, instead of hankering for more and more money, a sincere devotee of the Lord tries to invent some ways to earn his livelihood, and what does so Krishna helps him. Earning one's livelihood, therefore, is not a problem. The real problem is how to get free from the bondage of birth, death, and old age. <clears throat> Attaining this freedom and not inventing unnecessary necessities is the basic principle of Vedic civilization. One should be satisfied with whatever means of life comes automatically. The modern materialistic civilization is just the opposite of the ideal civilization. Every day, the so-called leaders of modern society invent something contributing to a cumbersome way of life that implicates people more and more in the cycle of birth, death, old age, and disease. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Arjan Jarandasya Jarandasya Sakaya Sakshulamitam Jena Tazme Shri Gurupe Namaha Shri Chaitanya Vanaubi Stam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Gadamayam Dantisa Pudantikam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Garada Shri Vasudeva Gaur Bhaktivinoda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Translation once again. While working hard to earn his livelihood as much as necessary to maintain body and soul together, one who's actually learned it should live in human society unattached to family affairs although externally appearing very much attached. <clears throat> so this 
verse, this chapter, <clears throat> Canto 7, <clears throat> chapters 11 through 14, are very instructive, especially for the people in Grihastha Ashram. We there are four ashrams, Brahmachari, Vyastra, Vanapras, and Sanyas. So Brahmachari Ashram is there from age of five to twenty-five approximately. One should live in Brahmachari life. Single student completely celibacy, no, no associated with women, no sex life. Then, if a brahmachari is having some trouble and doesn't feel comfortable in brahmachari life, with the permission of his guru, he can enter into grihastra life, or household life. But he should read these chapters first so he can understand that family life is the life of responsibility and how one should live one's family life. <clears throat> Although family life is is a ashram, the Grihastha ashram. But, and it's considered a license for sense gratification. But there are four regulated principles. Everybody in this movement has to agree to follow the time of initiation we promise no intoxication, no gambling, <clears throat> no meat eating, and no illicit sex. So in chapter 12, text number 11, says all the rules and regulations apply equally. Householders and sannyasis, members of renounced order of life. Igrihastha, however, is given permission by the spiritual master to deal, to indulge in sex during the period favorable for procreation. It's sometimes misunderstood that a Grihastra householder is permitted to indulge in sex at any time. This is a wrong conception of Grihastra life. In Brahmachari life, in spiritual life, whether one is a Grihastra, Vanaprastra, Sannyasi, or Brahmachari, everyone is under the control of the spiritual master. For the Brahmachari and Sannyasi, there is a strong restriction on sex indulgence. Similarly, there is a strong restriction for Grihastra. <clears throat> should, Grihastra should indulge the sex life only according to the orders of the Guru. Therefore, as mentioned here, the must follow, one must follow the spiritual master. Guru Vritir Vikalpena. When the guru, spiritual master orders, the Gyastra may accept sex life. So, one of my god brothers was arguing with me at one time that. No illicit sex. It so means you, you can have no you can have sex with your wife as much as you want. But that's not confirmed here. And also in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "I'm sex life according to religious principles." That means if the Grihastras can have sex life once a month at the time when best for conception and not otherwise. 
And after the child is conceived in the womb, then there's no sex life for nine months till the child is born. And then once they wait another six months, if they want to conceive, have another child. So that's 15 months, whether one likes it or not, in the Grihastra Ashram, he must remain celibate. Of course, <clears throat> so the Ashrams may want to compromise on the principles and say it's all right to have sex only with your wife at any time. But this is not confirmed in the Shastra. So the serious students, Krishna consciousness, who take initiation must understand that this is not the proper way to act. Especially in Vrindavan. Sex life. Prabhupada said if someone's lusty, has lusty desires in Vrindavan, then they should not remain here. They should take, come and go, take short visits, three or four days, come and go, and not stay in Vrindavan and grievously commit offenses to the Dham. So having illicit sex is a grievous offense. And for that offense, the Grihastra, um, <clears throat> when they leave their body in Vrindavan, they take birth as an animal. It's a short birth, a monkey, a dog, a hog. Then they're absolved of their sins, and then they can go back to Godhead. But Prabhupada said, we should finish the business in this life. We should not waste our valuable life, not waste our time having to come back again as an animal. So in this verse, two things are very important. One is that the family man, one should live in his family life, family life unattached to family affairs. And this is uh, vairagya, detachment. These two things, remembering Krishna and being, being detached. Srila Prabhupada showed the example, ideal family life. He <clears throat> was ordered by his Guru Maharaj in 1922 to take up the mission, preach the mission of Lord Chaitanya all over the world, especially in the English-speaking world. So Prabhupada took that word, order to heart, a.k.a. Guru Nandana, 241 Bhagavad Gita, and spent his whole life, lifetime in preparation for preaching Krishna consciousness. So even in his household life, Prabhupada was awarded the name Bhaktivedanta because of his scholarship. But unfortunately, Prabhupada's family members <coughs> weren't so eager to cooperate with Prabhupada. So one time Prabhupada went out and he came back to his house I was looking for his Srimad Bhagavatam. So he asked his wife, where's my Srimad Bhagavatam? And she said, well, we didn't have any money, so I took it to the shop and I traded it for tea biscuits. The so Prabhupada said to his wife, you can choose tea or me. So she thought he was joking, but <clears throat> he wasn't. And so Prabhupada left his family and took the Divana Prasta order. But Prabhupada had five brothers and sisters to take care of his family. And, but he didn't feel it was necessary that he remain in family life. And Prabhupada says the most abominable thing for one to remain in family life for his whole life. At least at the age of 50, 
or after 50, 55, one should take Vanaprastha life. Shri Gornita Kishtabhara Radha Sarasandha. When one marries, he should know that at the age of 50, that one should retire from family life. That means Vanaprast life, which means no more sex life, no more association with women are limited. Of course, the Vanaprast, he can keep his wife with him if she's favorable and helping him in his Krishna consciousness, but not for sense gratification. We have devotees in our movement who have showed this example by Shashika Prabhu and many others. <clears throat> they have a house in, somewhere and they no longer live with their wife. They've made separate arrangements so they can just practice spiritual life. So after 50 years of age, he uh, most of one's life should be utilized for becoming Krishna conscious, not otherwise. So this is called detachment. But it's not easy to become detached from family life. When you have children and grandchildren, so devotee, devotees don't become detached so easily. Some do, some don't. But here it says, even while one's in his family life, he should be unattached to family affairs, although externally appearing to be very attached. You know, Raghunath Das Goswami was in family life. His father was very wealthy, he was earning three lakhs every month. He had a wife who was as beautiful as an angel. But these things didn't appeal to Raghunath Das, and he kept running away from home to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And his father would send his men to bring Raghunath Das back. So this was going on for a while. And <clears throat> so they didn't know what to do. So Raghunath Das, Father said we should bind Raghunath Das. But his mother said, even if you bind him, he'll still be attached to, the, to going to Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Raghunath Das understood the situation, and therefore he pretended externally, like he acted like an ordinary householder doing ordinary affairs. And this way, the guards became a little lax. They were always guarding him, keeping him from going away. But then one night, when all the guards were sleeping, his guru came and said that there was some problem in the temple, he asked Raghunathas to help him. So Raghunathas went with his guru and halfway there, he told his guru, you can go home now, I'll take care of the situation. And then Raghunath Das took that as an opportunity to leave home for a good. So Raghunath Das got himself free from the entanglement of family life. <clears throat> when Lord Chaitanya was traveling in South India, Lord Chaitanya also was in family life up to the age of 24. He had a, first he married Lakshmi Priya, then she left her body, then he married Vishnu Priya. And Lord Chaitanya, in his first part of his life, he was known as Nimai Pandit. He didn't, make, people weren't aware that he was the Supreme Person of Godhead. They thought he was, 
he played the role of a very arrogant scholar and would defeat everybody in logic and argument. So, but Lord Chaitanya decided what household life was too disturbing for him and after he went to Gaya and met Ishwara Puri and took initiation, his mood changed. Instead of being a proud scholar, trying to feed everyone, he became a devotee and started exhibiting ecstatic symptoms. So when Lord Chaitanya came back and was exhibiting ecstatic symptoms, Mother Sachi got worried. She couldn't figure out what was wrong with her son. And the neighbor said that he's got a wind disorder. In Ayurvedic medicine, the Ayurvedic says there's 50, 52 different kinds of wind disorders which cause disease in the body. So they thought Mahaprabhu had a disease. It was on, and that was madness. The neighbor said he should bind his feet and give him, make, give him green coconut milk and rub his head with Vishnu oil. They even put the Lord Chaitanya in a vat of oil, sit for some time till he became normal. But Srinivas chariots, Srivas, Srivas Pandit came there saw Lord Chaitanya's condition and told Mother Sachi, you don't have to worry, Mahaprabhu is not in a disease condition. He's exhibiting ecstatic love of Krishna. So then Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and went to Jagannath Puri. And for the first six years of his life, he went to South India. And when he was in South India, he met one Brahman. And that Brahman name was Kurma. And the Brahman said to Lord Chaitanya, that I would like to go with you. I cannot tolerate being in family life. But Lord Chaitanya said, don't re make that request again. He said, Yare Dhate Tarika Krishna Upadesh. Amar Aga Guru Hana Tare Desh. Extract everyone to follow the words of Sri Krishna as are given in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, become a spiritual ambassador and try to liberate everyone in the land. Sri Chanya Mahaprabhu further advised the Brahmin Kurma if you follow this instruction, your materialistic life at home will not obstruct your spiritual advancement. Indeed, if you follow this regulated principle, we will again meet here, or rather, you'll never lose my company. So in this way, <coughs> the Lord, uh, wherever he went in South India, he gave the same instruction to people. So in Krishna conscious movement, people want to join this movement they don't have to uh, change their way of life, but they have to change their way of living. <clears throat> and here is the instruction. Uh, one should live, uh, only endeavor to make as much money as required. Our Krishna God's movement is simple living and high thinking. Not high living and no thinking. Material life means high living and no thinking. But our life is simple living and high thinking. So in the Ishapanishad, it says, Isha, Ishvasham, Vidam Sarvam, that can change to God, to God, Yam Jagat, Tene Tena Bujita, Nagrida Kasha Sridhanam. Anything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled or owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself 
which was set aside as his quota, one should not accept other things knowing well to whom they belong. So this was the, what the, was being spoken about here, that one should earn his livelihood, one should, we don't say people should not uh, make money or earn their livelihood, but people have to live, they have certain things, certain necessities are there. But we see in brahmachari life, it's very easy to live simple. And you don't have to worry about money, you don't have to worry about paying bills, you don't have to worry about anything. Just live a simple life, except whatever prasadam is provided, except whatever cloth is provided, and, and just preach or do your service and be free from anxiety. We have many grihasthas in this room. How many grihasthas are happy in family life? Raise your hand. I don't see too many hands. How many grihasthas are happy in family life? So, Brahmacharya should know that family life means so many difficulties. And get money is, is one of them. You can see the case of Sudama Brahman, he was an ideal grihastra. He never asked anybody for anything. And he was practically starving, he didn't have clothes, he didn't have much of anything. But because he was dhoti, he was satisfied to accept whatever came on its own accord. But <clears throat> some endeavor must be made by Grihastra to maintain his family. But uh, the Grihastra he went into the Grihastra life he should not give up his sadhana. We see when people enter rehearsal life, uh, the sadhana becomes very weak. And so he told me he was a brahmachari, he was having very nice sadhana. And his wife was single, she had very nice sadhana. But when they got married, neither one of them had any sadhana. So Prabhupada said in the purport in the Chaitanya Tartamrita that family life, advancement in family life is very slow or next to nil. There was one yogi who was meditating in the forest and he hung his copans on a line. And when mouse came there and started eating his gulpans. So he got a cat, because the cats eat mice, to keep the mice away. But then the cat was hungry, so he had to get a cow to feed the cat. And then he had a cow, so he had to get a wife to take care of the cow. And then he had a wife then he had to get a house to take care of the wife. Then he had children, and then he had so many responsibilities, and he forgot about being uh, a yogi. Or as many, he gave, forgot about his spiritual life. This generally happens, we see in the West, especially in America and Europe, when people get married, they stop coming to the temple, they have to work, they are <clears throat> having a hard time just chanting 16 rounds. I know I talk to them, different householders, they have to work a job and so many hours and they have a hard time finishing the rounds. So family life uh, is troublesome. And to live in family life and not be attached to wife and children, that is also 
troublesome. But it's recommended here that one should live in human society unattached to family affairs. So to be unattached from something, you have to be attached to something else. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was a family man, but he spent his time, he knew how to utilize his time properly. So he had to go to the court, he would do his work in four hours, so everyone else take, took eight hours. He would spend very little time, eat very little, sleep very little, and spend most of his time writing books and, and Vaishnava philosophy. So he showed ideal family life. So one must live in family life unattached to family affairs. So, <clears throat> but the material world is such a place, Daivyesha Gunamai, Mamamaya Durayaya. Material energy is very strong. And what did Pallad Maharaj say in the he said to his friends, he Vishnu, that goal of life is to uh, go back home back to Godhead. So this is the proper use of human form of life. Here in the purport, it's saying that uh, if one doesn't utilize his human form of life properly, then he has to again take birth in the, <coughs> in the material world. And he bow, go back, uh, says prakriti kriyamanami guna karma sarvasaha. So everyone is under the grip of material nature. And if one does not become Krishna conscious and give up his sinful activities, then at the time of death, he has to go to Yamaraj and is judged according to his pious and pious activities. And then he's given a body again and lower species. Here it says, he gives the body a lower species until he evolves again to the higher species until he returns to the human form of life. So in the school, they teach this theory, Darwin's theory of evolution. But Darwin didn't know anything about the soul, and his theory, we don't accept his theory as correct, because he, he didn't know anything about the soul. Tato Brahmaji Gyasa, or uh, Humber Masmi, I'm a spirit soul. And life comes from life. Life does not come from chemicals. So it's not that the different forms of life are, uh, there's, uh, that the one life comes from another life, or one form from another form, but it's because of the presence of the soul. This is described, Krishna describes this in the Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, Deino Smen Yatadehe Kumaram Yovanam Jara, that from boyhood to youth to old age, to me, at the time of death, one has to take birth again. So the soul is transmigrating from one form to another. Eight million four hundred thousand species. It's not that one species. The Darwin said that man came from monkey species. But there's so many monkeys in Vrindavan, we don't see any men coming from monkeys. Why have they stopped coming from monkeys? 
and monkeys are less intelligent. They have intelligence to steal things, to steal people's glasses, to get some food, or to steal something. But they don't have intelligence to hear Shabda uh, Brahman, to hear spiritual sound vibrations. So only in human form of life do we have the intelligence. So there's two paths one can take, Priviti Marg, Nivriti Marg. You can take the path of sense gratification, or you can take the path of liberation. Shreyas and prayas. The child doesn't want to go to school. Prabhupada said he didn't like to go to school either. So somehow had to take him to school every day. The child is sent to school by the parents because they know in the future it's for his future benefit. If the child doesn't get an education, then his future life he will have trouble. So, uh, the uh, human form of life should not be wasted only for sense gratification. The Devidu Sarakatim He Vishnu. The goal of life is to go back home, back to Godhead. But they don't know that. Human society doesn't know that. They're misguided, misguided by uh, uh, the leaders of society who don't know what the goal of life is. You ask anybody, you meet. What's the goal of life? And they can't tell you. The goal of life is not simply to get a big car, get a big house, have a lot of money, do whatever you want, eat whatever you want. This doesn't make people happy. We heard from the Python man. He said that a woman and a man unite in sex life thinking they'll be happy, but neither one of them are happy. The men have lots of money, millionaires, lock bodies, core bodies, but what is it? instead of being happy, they're in anxiety, can't sleep at night, they're always worried that someone's going to take their money, always worried about so many things. And a man in family life makes money, supports his family, but when he gets old and can no longer support his family, then they don't like them anymore, and they mistreat them. Or in America, they put people in old people's homes, so they don't have to take care of their, their family anymore. So the misuse of the uh, family life. So we should hear, if one should hear from Guru, Guru Shastra, Sadhu Vaikya. Guru Sadhu, Shastra Bhaikya, Chitta Kariya Aikya. That by uh, accepting Guru, Guru Ashraya, not that, the Devidu, no. One should, Bhagavad Gita says, that one should accept the spiritual master and uh, hear from him, uh, serve the spiritual master. And to service the spiritual master and inquire from him submissively, the spiritual master can impart knowledge because he's seen the truth. So Guru and Shastra and Sadhu, these three things are important. And Baude Vijbushan says, by worshiping the lotus feet of the spiritual master, then one can Get free from the glue of the modes of material nature. It's like super glue. The modes of nature, goodness, passion, ignorance, are strongly glued to the living entity. And to get free from that, very difficult. But 1426, Bhagavad Gita says that one who does not fall down in any circumstance can come to the level of Brahman. Brahma Bhuya Kalpate. 
So it's by how to come to that level where we're always on the transcendental platform, and that's by worshiping the, the spirit, lotus feet of the spiritual master. So we sing the prayer in the morning, Samadhi Arti, Samsara Dava. We sing the prayer, Sri Guru Charana Padma, in the Guru Puja. The lotus feet of the spiritual master is the only way to attain pure devotional service. So this is a very important item. The householder, if a uh, saintly person comes to a householder's house, he should wash his feet, accept the remnants of his food, and take the dust from his feet and the water that washes his feet. These three substances are very important for devotees. So the principle here is that uh, we should live according to the Vedic civilization. Modern civilization, they don't know what is Vedic civilization. In Vedic civilization, described in the Krishna book, the one that must accept a guru, a sadguru, who's knowledgeable and who can guide you how to uh, live a spiritual life. It says, Krishna told Arjuna that you are acting like a non-Aryan, or a non, uh, not, because he refused to fight and he refused to follow. Uh, so Krishna said, you're acting like a non-Aryan. Aryans are those who follow Vedic civilization. In the Vedic civilization, uh, people, no one would show show their lower half of their body. We know the sons of Kavera, they were intoxicated so much so, when Narada Muni came by, they didn't even try to cover their bodies. So Narada Muni cursed them to stand as trees, because trees stand naked for hundreds of years. Of course, that was a blessing. They also were in the courtyard of Nana Maharaj and got the blessings of Krishna, who liberated them from that curse, the tree body. So otherwise, if people don't live uh, according to Vedic civilization, then there could be no peace in society, and people cannot be happy in society. As long as they're slaughtering innocent animals, as long as there's slaughterhouses, then there always must be war. Because war is a direct reaction to slaughterhouses. So slaughtering animals, then the war is a slaughter of, of human beings. So so-called religion, Kaitava Dharma, there's many cheating religions in this world. But don't tell people that they should give up and eat meat. When Prabhupada met Professor Dayalu, I mean, yeah, Cardinal Dialu in France. He told him that you should not eat meat. This is supposed to be a religious leader. And he said, oh, all the children are hungry. They have to eat meat. We have to eat meat. Probably in so many ways, he tried to instruct them that meat eating wasn't good, especially the cow. If you want to eat meat, it says in the Bhagavatam, if someone wants to eat meat, you can eat a goat or a deer, but never a cow. The cow is the goal. Ramanya Hitai Chai. Goal is the most dear to Krishna. And the cow is pure. The cow dung, cow urine, is used for the abhishek of the deities. And when you go to the Goshal, you see the cow dung, flies don't even go near it. So cow is pure, and all the demigods reside in the body of a cow. So this wholesale of cows is the most uh, abominable activity in the society today. Killing cows, wholesale slaughterhouses, people don't think there's anything wrong with it. And also their abortion, they're having abortions, killing the baby in the womb, and they also don't think there's anything wrong with that. 
If you ride the train in Mumbai, they have signs on every car that you can get an abortion for so many rupees. They don't think that it, there's a living entity, a soul in that body, and that, 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 living, that you're killing a living entity when you're having abortion. So in this way, the whole society is being ruined. And Prabhupada says in this purport that the modern materialistic civilization is just the opposite of ideal civilization. Every day, so-called leaders of modern society invent something contributing to a cumbersome way of life that implicates people more and more in the cycle of birth, death, old age, and disease. So we know in the 1700s, in the 1800s, people didn't have electricity, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have computers, but they were living comfortably. And now they're inventing so many things, more and more new things, gizmos and gadgets, that are implicating people more and more in material life. People have to buy these things with a credit card. Everything, people buy everything with credit cards, and they have a credit card, and then they have to work very hard to pay off their credit card. And so, more and more, people are becoming more and more implicated in fam in material life, and very difficult to take the spiritual life. So, uh, <clears throat> one should take the spiritual life. Vlad Maharaj told his friends that now is the time. They were only five-year-old boys. They didn't want to hear spiritual instructions. They wanted to play. But Vlad Maharaj said, no, now is the time, before you get entangled in material life, to take the spiritual life. And this way, one should utilize his human form of life in the proper way so he will not have to take birth again and suffer repeated birth and death. There's many more things you can talk about here in this verse. But the main thing is all soldiers should only accumulate as much wealth as required to maintain family affairs and should not be, should be acting in a way that he's attached to his family, but actually, internally, he should be attached to serving Radha and Krishna, developing his love for Radha and Krishna. Attached externally, unattached internally. And <clears throat> this is the, what is being described here. But it's, it may be difficult, but family, uh, this is one of the pitfalls in family life, is earning more money than necessary. So Prabhupada had requested that his householder give 50% of their income to the Krishna Conscious Movement. And when Raghunath Das Goswami, Rupa Goswami, retired from family life, they gave 50% of their income. They had boatloads of silver and gold. They gave 50% of their income to the Brahmins and Vaishnavas, 25% they gave to family members, and 25% they kept for emergency. And this way they showed how we become detached from family life, from wealth, and so many things. Yesterday we heard from Janardana Swami about a man who heard that Sanatana Goswami had a touchstone, and, but he wasn't interested in it. Touchstone gives you gold. It's not on Goswami. He told him, I have something better. And so the man said, what is that? He said, well, you throw away the touchstone and I'll tell you. And he told him that some, I have something better than this touchstone. And that is the chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So let's stop there. Any comments, questions? Time is up. No comments, no questions. 
Vantaraj, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki, Srimad Prabhupada Ki, 